Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Cooking Uncovered. My name is Miriam and this afternoon I'm making this great scone recipe which has three creams. It has milk, which is some cream in it, and it has cream cheese and it's, I'm going to use an old white cheddar with chives and basil and it is so delicious. I made them this morning for the girls. They were here and now I'm going to do them again because I'm going, I'm going out tonight to a girls night and I'm going to take them in actually smaller sizes, bite size, so I'll show you that. But first of all, I've just cleaned my chives from out of the garden and I just want about um, three tablespoons of chives and I'll put those into a bowl, save those. And then I'm going to, so this is called um, just a tiny dice or it's called brunoir is the tiny dice. Now my basil, I have just washed and I'm going to show you this technique, it's called chiffonade. And what you do is you line up the leaves and then you roll them, I guess like they do um, cigars, and then you slice through them and it's called chiffonade and it makes them nice and fine and perfectly cut. So just roll it all in a little ball there and then you just, if some gets out it doesn't matter and then it's going to be perfect for the scones. It's going to be excellent. And then you can just cut them down as well this way. And there we go. So there's my basil. So about uh, three tablespoons of basil and three tablespoons of uh, chives will be enough. So let's start, shall we? All right, so into my mixer. Now you can do this by hand as well. That's not a problem. But I happen to uh, have my stand mixer ready, at the ready. So that's one cup, one and a half, two cups of flour, all-purpose flour. Now you can use whole wheat flour for this. You can substitute, uh, do one cup of whole wheat and one cup of all-purpose flour. It works really well. One eighth of a cup of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to use one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of salt. So that goes in there. So just mix that up. Now to that, I want to add my butter, which is really cold, and five tablespoons of butter. So I've got this great butter that already has pre-measured on the side. So I'm just gonna cut this up and get this mixing in my bowl. And it's sticking to the buffet. There we go, so I'm gonna mix this up. So it's going to just, uh, we're going. Now, for this recipe, I'm using Philadelphia cream cheese because it really does add an amazing dimension. Light, fluffy, tasty. So, what I want is uh, one, qu one quarter of the package. So, I'm just going to cut off some of that. But I don't want to add it with the butter just yet because I'm going to add it afterwards. So, that's ready to go. So, then, I've got my herbs ready. I've got my egg ready for the, for the top of the scones. I want to get that all mixed up to, um, for an egg wash. So, I'm just going to get a fork. So here's the fork. So that's going to be my egg wash. Perfect. Perfect. Now all my dry ingredients are there. Now it's, it's blended. It's all mixed up and it's to a mealy state. So you want it to keep going until it's about the, the butter and flour. The butter is about pea size. Perfect. Perfect. Now, I also, while, I, while I'm doing this, I also have my cookie cutters. Now, these I got from my mom ages ago. And I, I must say, when I'm out at garage sales, I collect these. If I ever find cookie cutters, I collect them. So I've got this size, and this is my, so the three sizes. I'm going to use this size today because I'm going to use these as an appetizer. But this morning, I made them on the two and a half inch ring. So you can choose your sizes, of course. All right, now that the butter is mixed in, I'm going to add a quarter of the package. So about 65 grams of the cream cheese. So now that's going to work its way in. So I've got my herbs ready to go. I have my milk ready to go. Now, a trick. Here's a little time-saving trick. With scones, if you overmix them, once you add the fluid, they will be hard and dense and not very nice. So the trick is to undermix them as much as possible in your bowl. So I'm going to add my milk. I've got two-thirds of a cup of cold milk here, but 
but I've also got some milk spare, uh, some spare milk here. Because if it's too dry, then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of milk to that. So this is working away nicely. Now I'm going to just turn over my board because um, I want to, oh, maybe I'll just wipe this off and dry it off. You need a dry board for your, to roll them out on flour. So I'm just going to dry this off. And now my board is going to be, I'm going to put some flour on my board. That would be perfect. Now this is almost ready. The butter is all mixed in. So in goes now my herbs. So the three tablespoons of chives, fresh. Three tablespoons of um, my basil. Uh, now, of course, if you wanted to add oregano or if you, let's say you wanted to add some bouquet garni, which I get from the Red Barn, this would also be amazing. But right now I'm just going to use those. Got my salt in there. And at this point, I'm going to add my one cup of my, it's the Pecorino Romano cheese, which tastes so good in here. So I'm just going to grate, finish grating that. There we go. And all that goes into this now with the herbs. And you just want to mix it up ever so slightly. You don't want to over mix at this stage because of the moisture in the cheese. What will happen is you'll actually make a dough without meaning to. So I'm just going to incorporate the cheese so it's all floured around it. So mix that up, mix that up, mix that up. And then I'm going to add my two thirds of a cup of milk. In it goes. And I'm going to watch it to see how it is, to see if it's coming together. And it looks a bit dry, so I'm going to add two more tablespoons. And at that point, I'm going to stop. I hope I haven't overmixed it because it's you tend, you know, I, you can overmix it very easily. It should come out with some dry spots. If it doesn't come out with dry spots, you've overmixed it. So be very careful. So that was two thirds of a cup plus two tablespoons of milk. All right, so this is what it looks like in the bowl. Isn't that great? See, it's still very, it doesn't look like it's anything right now, but I'm going to help it form together gently into a, a ball. Now, what I need is one of those KitchenAid, KitchenAid mixers with the glass bowl like Anna Olson has. That's an amazing machine. Maybe, maybe for my birthday which isn't coming up for a long time. So I don't want to knead this, I don't want to work it. If it doesn't come together, just leave the dry stuff in the bottom of the bowl. Don't worry about that. Because what happens is you'll end up ruining your scone by trying to incorporate every bit of dry, dryness. So, now, remember I also told you before, if you want to get dough off your hands, use flour. To get dough, put your hands in water because your hands become all gummy and pasty. So there, all the dough is off my hands. I lightly floured the top of my scones, and now I'm going to roll them out to whichever width I want. So that's about the inch thick. Now I take my little tiny cookie cutter, and I'm going to cut them all out. Now the trick, of course, here is that you need to flour your cookie cutter. I have my bake sheet over here, which I'm going to put on top of here, so I I'm running out of space, of course. Now these are going to go in the oven. Because they're so small, you will probably find that they bake a lot quicker. So I would, 375, I would take them, now why is this sticking so much? I would take them out um, at about, uh, watch them carefully, take them out eight, eight or nine minutes, and, um, and so you don't want to overcook them. So they want to be golden brown on top. Now to these, Wow, they're sticking. This is amazing. So now to these. Aren't they gorgeous? They're going to be so delicious for little um, appetizers tonight. So now I'm going to egg wash the top of these. And after I finish cutting all of these scones, my herb cream cheese scones, I'm going to pop them into the oven, 375 for about mm, eight minutes. you got to watch them though because you don't want them really, really brown. So, and if you are using the two and a half inch one cookie cutter. This is the way they come out. Isn't that gorgeous? We had these for breakfast this morning and I'm gonna tell you these are excellent. So, and I just want to tell you that I've got a new blog up and running thanks to my friend, uh, Janine Friesen, who is in Manitoba, Steinbach, Manitoba, and she also has a blog and she's an amazing cook and she does all her, her cooking, all her recipes 
are all gluten free. She's an amazing woman, and her uh, website is www.thebakingbeauties.com, and she has some amazing recipes on there. So thanks to Janine, my friend that I met on the Philadelphia contest, I now have a blog where you can actually print these recipes in a print-friendly form. So thanks, Janine, for that, and I'm hoping that you all enjoyed this recipe because it was a lot of fun making this morning. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get these baked because I only have like three hours and I've got to be at the girls' night, so I'm off. So thank you for watching and for joining me on Cooking Uncovered. I'll talk to you later. Bye.